you read that, Jordan, how they, how they talked about maybe making their own base. Uh, from what I've read, they uh, this is entirely experimental for now. They, I, I think they're doing this a lot. Well, the same way I think that Valve is doing it, they're experimenting. They're trying to see what will happen, but they're not wanting to commit to one thing or another until they till they see. Well, you know, it's right. like for, for those of you wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about um, Mint Debian. Before we get into some other stuff that's uh, cropped up since we last did our research and other stuff. And whether or not Mint's fixing to split off from Ubuntu or Rosan. I, I like, like you say, this isn't official, this isn't sign. I, honestly, what I see them doing is exploring another possible path for Mint to go down. And at the end of the day, they're going to follow whichever one of these forks, whether being an Ubuntu spinoff or being a, a, a distro based back on Debian, which Ubuntu was based on, uh, so they can go back more to a, a, a pure source with what the users go with. I mean, at some point here, either traditional Mint or Mint Debian is going to have more of the Mint user base. And when it becomes clear which direction people who want to use the Mint OS want to go, that's when it's going to become clear uh, which direction Mint's going to go. Right, right now, there isn't enough information for even Mint to have a clue which is the better path to go. Well, my question wasn't really about if Mint would my question wasn't really about that, thinking like Mint would do that. I'm just asking, what do you think kind of things would happen if they actually, and not, not just split off as a Debian base, split off as their own base, uh, like they did talk about that they did consider, uh, but I do think that, I don't honestly think that they'll do that, but what do you, do you think, I mean, do you think that they could pull something like that off? Like, what would you see the problems with that? So you mean completely rebasing, starting from scratch, not even being Debian based? Yeah, one of the things he was talking about is they might wind up making like their uh, their own package, like instead of being .deb, they'd be a Mint package, or so you know, completely go off, do their own thing, Which everything they have else. Made before, just didn't get popular, so I'm worried. Well, no, it's like I. I why Mint's a good distro, I don't think it's known well enough or strong enough, and really no distro is. Uh, I mean, even Ubuntu did not go and create an Ubuntu package manager. They're still using the dev package manager. Realistically, there's the two big 800-pound gorillas, which is dev and RPM. And realistically, if you want to be a successful distro, even if there's going to be some minor incompatibilities and some minor tweaks power users have to do who are going to install from outside the distro, you want to go with one of these two 800-pound gorillas for your package manager, at least as far as the shape of the ecosystem is now. Well, I'm saying, but if they do start from scratch, they don't totally have that option. I mean, I suppose they could have depth for them, but... If they start from scratch, having a .dev file literally mean nothing rather than having a .mint because they would be totally incompatible with any .dev file that was not made for their distro if, well, they, if they did not at least base it off. Well, no, and, and I honestly think that would be a bad thing for Mint to do at this point, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. It would be bad for the distro, but I mean, I honestly would really like to see them have full control over their, the whole distro because, I mean, I think that they have good developers, so I, I would really like to see what they would come up with. I just don't think that they would be able to pull it off. Well, A, I don't think they'd be able to pull it off, and I want to hear what Jordan has said on this, but B, um, that would almost sound like making, uh, even though Mint is much better than Xandros, but that's almost making a Xandros-like distro where y you're trying to proprietize Linux, which instantly, the moment you try and do that, you make two enemies. The entire open source community and the traditional ecosystem in which most Linux distros operate in. Even if you have the best thing since sliced bread, the whole idea behind Linux operating systems is they're not under one particular company's thumb. They are open source, they are sun. And even if they leave that entirely open source, unless they have like Bill Gates money to entirely fund it themselves without any outside influence and user support and anything whatsoever, yeah, you cannot afford to alienate 
or even a appear to be trying to close source Linux, even if you're not doing it. If that, I might be going off on a little bit of a tangent there, but as Mint tools are open source. Mint menu is Mint install all that stuff. It, the source code is open. So. No, no, I know, but like what you're talking about is going back to scratch and trying to completely rebuild everything up from sign and make it so everything is the Mint installer, the Mint at everything. Uh, it, it's it, why a lot of distros do that. If you went it to that extreme, it, it's it would leave a sour taste in some people's mouth. Or do y'all think I'm just being completely tinfoil hat either? No, I mean, it, it has to do with just it would kind of fragment Linux a bit because Mint would be, it would, I mean, if Mint made its own distro, it might fail in the long run, but it would in the short run succeed. A lot of people might switch to it, and that would not necessarily be good because they might fail later and then a lot of the work done with that is kind of it would set yeah. Linux it would go because yeah it's back. not based on <laughs> anything the work can't really be transferred as easily over and it would kind of be a lot of lock work with Mint and they would have to go back and it would disrupt the Linux ecosystem a bit because Mint well, and, you know and, and, they're and, pretty as far as user base, and it, it is enough to disrupt at least desktop Linux. Well, no, and, I, and I think that's why it would almost immediately alienate the open source community, even though it would still be open source, because of the potential disruption that that would cause. It, it's when people invest in open source projects, another thing, you know, they, 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 they don't want it to uh, be in any way, shape, or form a threat to the whole of the open source community, even if it is still open source. Okay, yeah, I know you have something to say on this, Jordan. We keep talking over you, sorry. No, I'm, I'm halfway thinking, you're halfway, you're just, <laughs> just putting putting ideas together. Uh, there, there's an, an idea I want to throw out there, but I don't know if I actually want to for fear of offending people. <laughs> Basically, there, there's a Linux distribution called Foresight Linux that I used to do work on. I used to uh, package for them. Uh, basically, they were created, a, a group of guys that helped start the Fedora project said, you know, we don't like the way RPM's going, we don't like the way Fedora's going, so we're going to create RPATH Linux, which is a server distro, and we're going to put a desktop on on top of that and call it Foresight. As far as I understand, Foresight is actually still what they use for the live GNOME DVD, the live GNOME CD, whatever it is. Uh, Foresight is an amazing distro. Uh, the package manager they created for it, it's very similar to, to the whole RPM packaging system. It's very similar to using YUM, uh, but it doesn't use YUM, it doesn't use RPM, so they've had to repackage everything by hand, uh, which and has led to there being very few packages, just like what James was saying, if they completely started from scratch, right. like Foresight did, uh, they would have to completely start from the ground up and repackage everything, uh, and that would lead to some significant fragmentation. And, and, I don't know how big the actually is at this point, but uh, having used Mint for a little while myself, if they completely rebased on nothing, uh, I would be a little leery to stick with it. Yeah, or, or what, uh, what, uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if, like, if they tried to do that, if it wound up, the distro wound up forking in half, where half of it's continuing the old stuff, which yeah. I would honestly see most of the current user base going with that fork just because it isn't starting over from scratch. And some would go the other way, but probably not the majority. And then, uh, honestly, I would I would foresee a large majority of people saying, one is the new version going to have all the software the existing one does. Is it going to have thirty thousand packages? If no, we will stay here and we will hold on to what is coming. Well, well, no, and, and honestly, the answer to the only answer I could see coming to that would be would be this answer. In time it will, but we need time to re remake all those packages for this new thing. So initially, no, but in time, it, it, which is the and same. Depending on the people that are, are working on it, the uh, was Chakra Linux was originally based on Arch Linux, and over a weekend, a couple of guys went through and completely rebuilt everything. I think it was one guy went through and repackaged everything over a weekend, and they rebased where they're not Arch tied anymore, as far as I understand. Yeah, I, I mean, if you have enough computers or enough people, you can do that in a weekend. Yeah, Most you have server farm. <laughs> yeah, and you <laughs> have to actually go through and do it. 
Yeah, but I mean that that that's a lot of compute cycles. To... Well, I mean, especially with the size of, of the repos that they have in Arch or in, in Debian Ubuntu. Yeah, it's like I, I don't even. Yeah, honestly, I haven't seen the article the article saying that they were going to rebase off of, of their own off, rebasing off scratch. Uh, but the basic basing off Debian is actually a great step for them if they decide to go that way. Yeah, which is a, which is a distro they're offering now. It's like they're offering traditional Mint, which is based on Ubuntu, and they're offering Mint Debian, which is based on Debian, which I don't necessarily think is a bad idea. My only concern there is, in the short run, that might cause some issues because one of Mint's big strengths right now is it can largely run uh, the Ubuntu libraries, which a Debian-based Mint distro wouldn't be able to do 100%. Which, that, that's a two-edged sword there. It's, it's well, yeah, and, and honestly, that's a sword that's been caused by Ubuntu. Uh, because before Ubuntu split off a Debian and took some of their best programmers, this problem didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, well, I mean, I don't see that as too much of a problem. It, it just, it would cause a little bit of a confusion, but I mean, if you want to be Debian compatible, you would use Linux Mint Debian. If you want to be a bunch of compatible, you use the normal versions. Well, and honestly, if they get the Debian, if they redo all the packs that are the in-between packs that aren't quiet and just need to be repackaged a little bit, um, that would actually not only help uh, the Debian Mint, excuse me, the Mint Debian be a stronger consumption, that would also help bring a lot of the stuff in the Ubuntu libraries to a whole sea of distros which are based on the pure Debian rather than the Ubuntu version of Debian. Which is, there's still a lot of distros based on that that can't take advantage of the full Ubuntu libraries. But if Mint went and did the work for them, uh, that would bring those that, those libraries and packs to a, a whole family of distros. Um, which would help anything that's even remotely Debian based, you know, Become that's you know that kind of hurt RPM, which is not which is the world I live in. But it's not, see, the reason that and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, but I think that the reason that uh, Debian packages and a bunch of packages aren't compatible isn't necessarily how they work. They pretty much work the same. It's their dependencies. Ubuntu yeah. uses different versions of stuff than Debian does. Right. So when you install a package and it'll install different dependencies, you could break your Ubuntu system because of that. Right. Well, and that's that's really the same thing on any distro when you install from outside your repository. You wind up having to uh, I, either... It can't break you from doing that. Right. Which would be a good thing all around. So it's just, it's one of those things that's really too early to know what this means, but it has a lot of potential in a lot of different ways. Some good, some bad. That's, um, I'm sure this will uh, really help Linux Mint as a whole. They're going to get a lot of donations on this. Um, and I, a thought came to my mind when you were talking about all these different installers. You know, we were talking before about a kind of, it would be good if we could have a successful common installer. And um, the, the problem is we can have something like that with an interpreter because if if we had something like that and enough work was put into it and there were packages for it, mm -hmm. then basically you could make something Linux Mint could make its own base, and all that needs to be made for it is that interpreter, and then they would have access to all the packages. Yeah, but to do that step without a universal interpreter like that causes problems. After a universal interpreter is made like that, pretty much any distro could do whatever they want without risking doing anything to anyone. Uh, but that's something that's been trying to... The, 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 the real divide there is, you know, package method A is convinced they've got it right, and package method B is convinced they got it right, and, and so on and so forth. So they're all convinced, well, give us time, we'll dominate, and we'll be the universal package thing. Right. <laughs> Which is like, it's, um, it, 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 it's one of the few points in Linux where, it, it, there's so many things in Linux where this is an issue, but it's one of the few things in Linux where open source, you know, anything flies, anything goes, is kind of getting in the way of itself because you can't put your foot down and go everything will be this way without 
putting your foot down and saying everything will be this way. So, so 